This dog is getting dyed pink and purple to fit her bougie name. This is Chanel, and she came in with some leftover colors and some actual leftovers on her face. I applied the dye thanks to the help to Jessica because Chanel can be a little shafeisty sometimes. I rinsed it off and then washed her in a deep cleansing shampoo so the dye doesn't transfer onto anything. And y'all, Chanel's side eye was so intense, it should be written in history books. I always find it so funny when dogs have personal beef with the towels. Chanel has a lot of personality and hair, so after I blew it out, I put her on my table getting ready for the haircut. Your breath smells so bad, Chanel. And listen, we all need to know when we need a mint because I have trauma from the fifth grade when a little girl came up to me and said, did you brush your teeth today? I said yes, and she said, wasn't good enough. Chanel was being really great on the table, so I gave her a kiss even though she did take a nibble out of my elbow earlier. I did some final finishing touches on this beautiful girl, and she knows herself that her BBL is BBLing, and it actually looks natural. Dr. Miami could never. For legal reasons, that was a joke, but I gave Chanel that accessory, and I was trying to find a pink and purple one, but I couldn't. She is all ready to side-eye everyone that buys a fake Chanel bag. Bye, Chanel. This palm puppy almost passed out on my table from all of my nonsense. This is Teddy, and it's his first time he's ever gotten a haircut, and I am already in love with him. He's giving, like, Pomeranian poster child. It's insane. He did show his pomitude a little bit in the tub and then just randomly decided to start standing. I use this purple shampoo on him so that his coat is extra white and bright, just like his future. I am doing a little bit of a trimming all over because he does look like a cotton ball with legs right now. And while that is okay, let's just tame this cotton ball a little bit. For some reason, me and Palms just really vibe. I don't know if it's because our attitudes are very similar. Like, we're both super sweet and adorable, of course, but when you do something we don't like, that's when we show our attitude. Rolling our eyes, side eyes, walking away from you, that's all things that me and Palms do together. People have said if I was a dog, I'd be a poodle, and I'm just thinking, is it because I'm gay? Because, like... That's a discussion for another day, but Teddy is all done, and if you were a dog breed, what would you be? Bye, Teddy! So I kind of messed up when I was grooming this dog. This is Maeve, and she's a Pomeranian, and I just got way too scissor happy. Sometimes you just have to own up to your mistakes, and this was my fault. So I knew that Maeve was supposed to be left longer. We like a fluffy look on her, very light palm trim. The problem I have in multiple aspects of my life is I don't know when to just stop. So here I am, grooming Maeve, listening to music, tuning out my own thoughts so I don't have to listen to myself. I tend to get caught up in my own thoughts, like, did I do the laundry? Did I leave that one dish in the sink? Have I even eaten lunch yet? And then I click back into reality, and I'm like, wait a minute, did I scissor Maeve's tail? Yes, okay, I did. But anywho, Maeve did a really great job regardless. As you could tell, I'm not even using, like, the grooming loop around her. I like to do this for, like, all of my dogs, unless they're trying to sing I'm on the Edge of Glory by Lady Gaga. So if they can chill and stand and I won't have to worry about them doing a triathlon on my table, then I won't have the loop around them. I think her haircut still looks cute. I mean, Maeve is just adorable in general, but she is all done. Bye, Maeve! This is the largest, fluffiest palm I've ever seen, and I'm giving her a complete makeover today. This is Belle Amy, and right now she kind of looks like a tumbleweed. No offense at all, just saying. I got this girl with her eyebrows on fleek in the tub and started to wash her. Even though she technically is a smaller dog, her bath actually takes a pretty long time because, of course, she has so much hair. And a Pomeranian's true form shows when you get their hair wet and they look like this. Of course, Bellamy's parents like to keep her super fluffy and super long, so I'm kind of just doing like a trim and a shape up on her. And it's really like sculpting or chiseling out a statue because there's so much hair to work with that I just work on one little part at a time. So basically, I'm just blending away until my eyes cross and all the dog hair gets into my brain. Even though Bellamy is like the final boss of all palms, she did a really great job on my table and stayed still, besides a little bit of table dancing and laying down. If you're wondering where her ears are, honestly me too, but I did some final finishing touches and she is all done and I think she looks so much better now. Bye Bellamy! Palms are very sassy creatures, and this one has ears like I've never seen before. This sweet girl is Maeve, and today I'm giving her a haircut. I knew that something was unique about her when I first saw her, but I couldn't put my finger on it until I got her in the bath and saw her ridiculously large ears. And I was actually asked to make them less prominent than they are. I think different characteristics on dogs is what makes it so fun, and I love bringing out the differences. So if it were up to me, I would have highlighted her ears in the haircut, but her parents want to hide them because they like a more palm look. I use my thinning shears to round and shape Maeve's little palm butt to make her double-cheeked up on a Thursday afternoon. And so overall, I'm doing like a light palm trim and just giving her some shape all over her body. All palms have their palmitude, and Maeve showed hers when I was trying to do her paw pads and nails, and she also didn't like when I tried holding her little snout. So I just worked around these little quirks to make sure that Maeve was the most comfortable possible. I did some final finishing touches and gave Maeve those little colorful balls, and she is all ready to go home. Bye.
I Maeve. I was dying this dog when his pomitude kicked in. This is Mr. Moosh, and he is literally baby. Today, I'm adding some color on him. I'm adding this blue to his tail, ear, and toes. After I apply the dye on the tail, I wrap it in tinfoil, so then if he sits, it won't get on his butt. Dyeing the little feet tends to be the hardest part, because dogs like to move around, and they're typically a little sensitive around their feet. And Mr. Moosh is especially sensitive around his left leg, because he actually had a bone replaced there. It's healed and fine now, but it's actually really common when a dog has an injury that they still continue to be sensitive around that area even when it's healed. This blue is lighter so it's not like the color that people have with blue eyes where they're literally staring into your soul like they're not a human being. Not trying to come for y'all with blue eyes they're very pretty but also you know keep like six feet away from me thank you. Overall though Mr. Moosh was really great on the table. It was really just that one leg that he didn't like me touching. I think the blue turned out pretty cute and Mr. Moosh definitely looks so much happier and more cleaned up after his haircut. And he is all done. Bye Mr. Moosh. I was really scared to work on this dog because of how aggressive he is. And if you don't believe me, you shouldn't because I'm completely lying. This is Charlie and he's a Pomeranian. He is literally the sweetest baby ever. If you close your eyes and you think of a Pomeranian in your head, you think of Charlie. He is like the icon of a Pomeranian. He's also like the size and weight of a football. At least that's what I think. I haven't touched a football in a very long time. I was never really into sports. I think I went to hockey practice like two or three times when I was around 14. And the only reason why I went is because the coach said I would be a good goalie. And that's because I was a fat 14 year old. I mean, hey, I really didn't have to be a good goalie. I was the size of the goal anyways, so nothing was going past me. Anyway, before I continue to trauma dump from my childhood, on Charlie's haircut, I'm just doing a scissor all over. Other than Charlie looking so cute, it's almost not real. I really like him because he's really great on the table. He literally does not move from wherever you put him, and that's amazing. I gave him that bow tie, and he's all done. Bye, Charlie. Trigger warning, if you don't like fleas or the thought of them and now your head itches, today I'm giving Gypsy a flea bath. So I mix up some flea shampoo and then I like kind of spin it around and it mixes really well, but then Gypsy left me a little present that I didn't see. Fleas tend to go in areas where they can be left unbothered, so anything like behind the dog's ears and neck where the dog can't really get to them. So those little spots we call flea dirt, which is basically like fleas taking a dump on your dog and any excess skin that's there. A lot of people actually mistake this for fleas, but they're not technically wrong because if there's flea dirt, fleas are there. So Gypsy's not on a flea preventative because she has medical complications and it's just not right for her. So she comes in, gets a flea bath, and I send the fleas to H-E double hockey sticks. I know it's hard to see, but there was actually about 10 fleas on the insides of her back legs. I'm assuming it's because the hair is really thick there for palms and so the flea was able to hide. But now she's super clean and pest free and I'm just scissoring around her feet and I gave her that little accessory and Gypsy is all ready to go home. And her accessory, are you kidding me? It's so adorable. Bye Gypsy. It's never a good sign when you feel something warm and wet touch your hand when grooming a dog. This is Princess Chanel and she's a palm puppy and she is the highlight of my day and I'm sure she's gonna be yours too. We're dyeing her feet pink and purple as well as her tail and she was so good for this process. I don't think she's had a professional haircut before and she's one of the chillest palms I've ever worked on. I like to say palms have a palmitude, especially as puppies. They're one sassy creature, but Chanel really lived up to her name as a princess. After we put on the dye, we wash and dry her and I I already knew that this was gonna look super cute. One thing about Chanel though is she's kind of similar to like a 80 year old grandma. She cannot seem to hold in her pee. She probably peed on my table like four or five times. Her hair was looking pretty crazy because she hasn't gotten a haircut and so today I'm giving her like a light trim and a bit of a shape up. For all puppies it takes a little bit for them to get used to the table and scissors. And after being used as her personal bathroom and getting a little bit of her pomitude, she did really great. I did some final finishing touches on Chanel and this pretty girl is all done. Bye Chanel. This potato with the snaggle tooth came in looking old and grumpy, and I'm here to fix that. This is Bear, and he's a chihuahua mix, and if I had to describe him in one word, it would probably be unbothered. I got him all scrubbed up in the tub and gave him a mandatory mohawk, and you can't tell me that he doesn't look like Jerry from Tom and Jerry. I put on conditioner and rinse it all off, and most dogs close their eyes when rinsing their face. Bear, like I said, is completely unbothered by it. I rinse off everywhere, of course, and it was so funny. When I was younger, I used to be so embarrassed to tell people I wash dogs, because the first thing that people ask is if I clean everywhere, and it really makes me wonder and hope hope that when they shower, they wash everywhere. One thing about Bear is he will take a seat. He would probably be the best in musical chairs. He wouldn't even get up from his chair. 
that's how good he is. I'm doing a boot cut on Bear, which is a short body and then like a circle head. And after I did some final finishing touches, I gave him that little accessory that kind of got lost under the rolls. But this Tootsie Roll is all ready to go home and show off his new haircut and his freshly brushed snaggle tooth. Bye, Bear. Here are eight unique dogs that I've groomed this month. So first up is Luna, and she really has no neck, so I kind of had to carve one out for her. And with Stitch, you never really know what direction he's going in. His eyes are trying to go left and right at the same time, and hey, me too, Stitch. Freya is a corgi mix with a tail, which is just so shocking to me. And Mikey's zodiac sign is a water sign, but he doesn't really like water, but he is emotional. However, coming from a Pisces, how can you not love a water sign? Next is Cash, who is looking extra rich and fancy with those new pink ears, and she has to tell the camera personally. Louis has the biggest cotton ball head I'm sure you've ever seen on a dog. Like, if you give a cotton ball some toothpick legs, that's basically what Louis is. Okay, and this dog did come in, like, last month, but Milo is just so funny in the tub. He looks like he knows something we don't and is scared to tell us about it, but then after, he just looks perfect. And lastly are these two Scottish Terrier puppies who have my entire heart. They were incredibly sweet, and we normally don't see them in this color, so that was also super fun. And let me know who was your favorite. A lot of people don't know how often you're supposed to be bathing your dog and giving them a haircut. So let me give y'all the rundown while you guys see some before and afters. So if you think of your dog's skin and coat as a cycle, it needs to be washed every 21 days or three weeks. Much like with us, if we don't wash our hair, we build up oils, dead skin, etc. And after three weeks, your dog's skin and coat has all that build up. And the oils and dirt need to be stripped or cleaned with shampoo. And then conditioner to apply good oils back into the coat so then the skin and coat isn't dry. So conditioner is as important as the shampoo. So what happens if you don't wash your dog for a few months. Hopefully and most likely nothing. However, the longer you wait, the more likely it is for skin irritation, infections, itchiness. A good rule of thumb is just to wash your dog every month unless there's already pre-existing skin issues. When it comes to getting a haircut, if your dog needs one, it really depends on how long your dog's coat is and how much maintenance you're willing to do at home. But again, you should be washing your dog at least every month, so might as well get them a haircut too. When it comes to getting their nails done, I would say at least every two to three weeks. Preferably sooner, I do my dog's nails every four to five days. Hope this helps and let me know if you have any questions. This little pop's eyebrows make him look angry, and it's the funniest thing ever. This is Mochi, and I believe that he was previously shaved, and so his hair is kind of uneven, and we really need to fix that. When you take a Pomeranian's coat too short, it's a gamble whether it's going to grow back evenly or not, or really grow back at all. And so many palm owners ask for the boo cut, rest in peace boo, which is basically like a really tight body and a circle head. And if you want that for your palm, that's completely fine. It's just the risk is your palm's hair might not ever be how it was before. So I'm using mostly my thinning shears to blend out everything around Mochi's body. We want to leave it as fluffy as we can while also evening it out. This is Mochi's first time at the salon and he did a really great job. As you can see, he's literally falling asleep. Palms can and will be a little stubborn and fight for when I have to hold their face to scissor their chest. And this Tootsie roll through some paws a little bit, but then he ended up being fine, and this was the most comfortable way for me to hold him. Don't ask me, ask Mochi, but hey, at least it works. In the future, Mochi's mom does want him to be fluffier, but it's kind of a process for the hair to grow evenly, and this little gentleman is all ready to go home. Bye, Mochi. This dog had his stick shift put in reverse. This is Poppy the Pomeranian, and when he first came in, I already knew it was gonna be a fun time. He's just a little weirdo, and I love that for him. He was a little suspicious of the water at first, but then once I got him all soaked down, he was fine. I love washing palms because some of them look so silly when they get wet. It's like a fun little game of is it a palm or is it a sewer rat gremlin? And Poppy, in fact, is a palm. After he denied my kiss and had butt me in the face, I think he felt bad, so he decided to be good for the blow dryer. I normally don't do nails like this, but this was most comfortable for Poppy, and his licking basically basically meant I might nibble on you, who knows. He didn't, and his mom wanted like a shorter palm cut, so I used my scissors to take off all that bulk, and now I'm blending out any harsh lines. And the way that Poppy would pose on the table, he's just talented, unique, spectacular, never been seen before. And then I gave him this Christmas-themed accessory, and I don't know if he's happy for the holidays, or he just wants to put it in reverse, Terry. And his little vampire fangs are just the icing on top. But if someone wants to explain this behavior, I would really love to know, because I have no clue. So this beautiful, round, handsome gentleman is all ready to go home. Bye, Poppy. It's my first time working on a cat. I'm just kidding. This is Zeus and he's a palm and he's very cat-like. I feel like it's the ears and the chunky cheeks that make him seem like a cat. Thankfully, he is a dog and not un gato because I am very allergic to cats. And that's the whole reason why I never end up working on them because first of all, I never really had an interest and I don't really understand cats. One time I was playing with a friend's cat and the cat started to bite me and my friend was like, oh, he's just playing. What do you mean he's just playing? My hand literally has bite marks in it now. I've met super nice cats, but when a cat is mean, like what are you even supposed to do with it? And so this is why I'm a dog person 
person even though I'm also allergic to dogs, it's because dogs are just more predictable and easier to understand. I swear cats be given mixed signals like wanting you to pet them and then as soon as you pet them they start attacking your hand. Like what even is that? After I scissored around most of Zeus's body, I trim up his three tail hairs. And if you're wondering why I have a scrunchie on, I actually use it to put the dog's ears back if they're in the way. Zeus doesn't really have the facilities to put his ears in a bun. But some dogs have a lot of ear hair and it gets in the way when scissoring the face, but I did some final finishing touches and Zeus is all done. I 